Good morning. How are you all today? Good, excellent. Thank you. Welcome. Welcome to worship this morning. Welcome to everyone who is worshiping at home on this lovely day. It's a beautiful day, great day for the Lord. Prayer of understanding. God of the prophet of the prophets and poets, the seers and storytellers of scripture, thank you for the ancient visions of your truth, which will guide us. Send us your spirit this day to open our minds and hearts to the word you have for us in our times. In the name of Jesus Christ, your living word, amen. Today's scripture reading is Micah, chapter 1, verse 2 to 5, chapter 5, verse 2 to 5a, and chapter 6, verse 6 to 8. Hear you peoples, all of you, listen, O earth, and all that is in it, and let the Lord God be a witness against you, the Lord from his holy temple. For lo, the Lord is coming out of his place and will come down and tread upon the high places of the earth. Then the mountains will melt under him and the valleys will burst open like wax near the fire, like waters poured down a steep place. All of this is for the transgression of Jacob and all for the sins of the house of Israel. What is the transgression of Jacob? Is it not Samariah? And what is the high place of Judah? Is it not Jer Jerusalem? But you, O Bethlehem, of Ephrathah, who are one of the little clans of Judah, from you shall come forth for me and one who is to rule in Israel, whose origin is from old, from ancient days. Therefore he shall give them up until the time when she who is in labor has brought forth. Then the rest of his kindred shall return to the people of Israel. And he shall stand and feed his flock in the strengthen of the Lord, in the majesty of the name of the Lord his God, and they shall live secure. For now he shall be great to the ends of the earth, and he shall be the one of peace. With what shall I come before the Lord and bow myself before God on high? Shall I come before him with burnt offerings, with calves a year old? Will the Lord be pleased with thousands of rams, with tens of thousands of rivers of oil? Shall I give my firstborn for my transgression, the fruit of my body for the sin of my soul? He has told you, O mortal, what is good? And what does the Lord require of you but to do justice and to love kindness and walk humbly with your God? The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let's pray. May the words from my mouth and the thoughts and meditations on our hearts be acceptable to you, O oh Lord, our rock and our redeemer. And as I preach, hide me behind your cross so that there is less of me and more of you. Amen. Do words matter? Do words matter? I hope they matter. I hope they matter because so much of what we do in worship is hearing and speaking and offering prayers to God and sharing with one another 
speaking out in public, I hope words matter. This week is the 27th conference of participating members of uh, the UN uh, group on climate change. They're meeting in Egypt, COP27. A lot of uh, environmental and uh, climate change activists and uh, leaders are there. And there was uh, Bill McKibben, is an American environmental activist, and he writes a, a, a newsletter throughout the week, and he's been going to uh, the COP conference for a good long time. And he, this week he remembered all the different protests that they've had of uh, people uh, participating in this conference, walking through the streets of whatever city they were, carrying signs. And, and this year, since they are in Egypt, where political expression is not necessarily free, uh, they're not walking through the streets. They're only walking uh, through this uh, little 800-foot section of the conference area where they are, all these delegates, because free political expression is not possible. All you need to do is ask the thousands of political prisoners there whether free political expression is possible. So instead of winding through the streets, there's an 800-foot path in this industrial warehouse district where COP27 is happening. It's the only five acres of political freedom in Egypt right now. So the question is, do words and silent protest matter? One of the participants at COP27 this year, her name is Sa'ana. She is the sister of Allah Abdel Fattah, one of thousands of political prisoners in Egypt. And she said this today, and she knows that when she leaves the conference, she herself will also be arrested and imprisoned. She said, I came here thinking I would be alone, she said. But instead, I found my family here. Know that your voices have echoed into every dark corner of every prison cell. I go to Cairo tomorrow to stand outside the prison gates with my mother. But I know I don't go alone. Do words matter? Yes, they do. They reach into the dark corners of prison cells. They reach into the corners all the world do words matter. They do. Micah. Micah is a minor, minor prophet. But practically every church quotes one of his verses to act justly, to love mercy, and to walk humbly with your God it is probably uh, cross-stitched and needlepoint and painted on so many Christians' homes, that verse painted on signs. A friend of mine, a Lutheran friend of mine, joked that there can't be any kind of document coming out of their national church without that Bible verse, Micah 6, 8, embedded somewhere in the document to act justly, to love mercy, to walk humbly with your God. Do words matter? Some people might say that Micah is a failed prophet because his prophecies of destruction didn't come to pass immediately. They eventually did. Micah was just this peasant farmer outside of the official group of prophets. He prophesied. The first three chapters of Micah are oracles of destruction. And then there's hope. Did Micah's words matter? Prophet Jeremiah says yes. Because one of the kings that ruled in the southern kingdom when Micah was a prophet, Hezekiah, actually implemented reforms to their society. 
And Jeremiah says it's because of Micah's words that King Hezekiah made these changes to their society. And it's because of Micah's words that those oracles of destruction were not fulfilled. Because Micah spoke God's word, Hezekiah changed the direction of their society. Do words matter? They do, and sometimes actions matter as well. You think of Ezekiel who lay on one side for 390 days just to prove a point. We think today of the young climate activists who are throwing mashed potatoes and yesterday maple syrup on works of art to make a point. And to all of you thinking that these artworks are destroyed, they aren't because art galleries have known for a long time that people do stuff like this. and They protect, put protective coatings on the paintings. But these young climate activists are making a point, keeping the threat of climate change in people's minds. But we might sit there and go, well, what's the point of that? It's not doing anything productive, is it? But we need the outspoken, outlandish prophets to keep the fires of change burning. We need the prophets like Ezekiel who lay on one side for 390 days just to prove a point. We need the prophets like Micah who was just a peasant farmer who spoke up, said we need to change. And we also need the diligent process workers who formulate the treaties, the laws and the regulations for our governments. We need the faithful corporate and industry leaders who see the need to change and implement changes to make this world a better place. We need all of that. Because it's just not one way of working that God calls us to. We need all people working to make change. People like Micah and then people like Hezekiah. Prophets who speak a word and leaders who listen and work to make change. Do words matter? We need all people working to make change, willing to act justly and to love mercy. Well, the last part of that verse in Micah, to act justly, to love mercy, to walk humbly with your God, to walk humbly with your God, what does that mean? Does it mean that we walk with our heads bowed low, not speaking out, not saying anything, because we often think of humility as being equated with being silent, lowering our head, not speaking up, not acting. But that's not what Micah is saying. To walk humbly with your God means to walk deliberately, daily with God, to listen for God's guidance, to accept God's guidance, to know that it's not just us who are doing the work, but it is God who is taking all the pieces that we offer and making something out of that. So it's not just those young climate activists who are throwing maple syrup on an Emily Carr painting. And it's not just the politicians and the scientists and the industry leaders. But God is using all of them to make a change. Will we participate? Is what we have to offer enough? Walk humbly with your God means to accept God's guidance, to offer what we have, and to trust that God will use it. Just think of Jesus and the 5,000. I talked a little bit about it during the, the children's story. But Jesus had 5,000 
men plus women and children to feed. And what did they have? A couple of fish and some loaves of bread. And Jesus said, that's enough. And he blessed it and he broke it and shared it. And it was enough. Because God blessed it and God used it. God taking the broken pieces of what we have to offer, blessing them and using our giftedness, our strengths, our determination to heal this world. So with head held high, we walk with God. As we know that it is God who is doing the work, we do not hide in the shadows, but we walk with God into the light. We think we have nothing to offer. Do you know that this week, you, you, the people here and the people at home, saved the lives of two women? You know that? This week, you saved the lives of two women. These aren't imaginary women, these are real women. You did that. How did you do that? Because God took what you offered, blessed it, and used it to heal, and to begin healing the lives of two women. How did this happen? What were the pieces that we offered? Three years ago when the pandemic started, Arise Ministry, which is one of our ministries in this city, with women and girls in the sex trade in this city, they didn't know what to do. Then they listened to God. And instead of walking the streets on Thursday nights, reaching out to women and girls in our city, they went online. And the volume of women that they were helping increased so greatly. And where the women were spread so widely. They were getting calls and requests online from women around the world because of your offerings, because of your prayers. Arise was able and is able to reach out to be a place where women and girls can call, email, text, whatever, to say, I need a little bit of help. I don't know what to do. And so this past week, two women in another country, south of the border, I don't want to say what state they're in, they reached out to one of the caseworkers at Arise Ministry and said, we need to get out of this business that we're stuck in, trapped in. And through a couple of phone calls and connections that God had made through the years, the caseworker in Toronto was able to reach out to an organization in the city where these women are and made that connection. And now those two women are safe and will live and will, God will begin, continue the healing for them. And you sit there and think, what we offered, is that enough? You know, two isn't a very big number. Two is not a very big number, but it's the only number that those two women know. These two friends. So two is a huge number to them. Act justly. Love mercy. Walk humbly with God and trust that God will take whatever you offer. Bless it and multiply it and use it in ways that you can't imagine to liberate, to save, to bring life, to bring healing, 
to bring hope and joy into people's lives, wherever they are. God, taking what you offer through this church. So walk with your head held high, offering the giftedness that God has given to you, offering the strength that God has given to you, offering whatever little we have, knowing that it all comes from God anyway, and offering it back to God, trusting that God will bless it and use it. Take these broken pieces of what we offer and bless them, we pray. Amen. Please join us for our prayer of the day. <clears throat> God of justice, you sent your servant Micah to proclaim justice and peace to a world that lacked both. Make us instruments of justice and peace so that your world might prosper. We pray these things in the name of Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen.